here I'm going to discuss few questions and answer about health promotion and maintenance. This question basically collected from previous year about NCLEX licensing exam. The first question here, a four years old girl has a urinary tract infection or we call it UTI. Which statement by the mother demonstrate understanding of preventing the future urinary tract infection? So there are four options. Which one seems mother can understand and it helps to prevent further infection? Number one, I should help my child learn how to wipe her button bottom from back to front. So number one is not an answer because say from back to front, it would be front to back. So it is not an answer. Number two, when she start uh, urining frequently, I should call Fiducia to request the antibiotics. So number two does not make any sense as well. So I should call physician to request for antibiotics. Mother is not a doctor that my baby need antibiotics. Doctor do decide she needs or not. Number two does not make any sense. I will let her take a warm bath for 15 minutes, every, 15 minutes every day. So 15 minutes every day bath prevent the urinary infection. No journal say that. It is not true. So I said number one is not answer. Number two is not answer. Number three is not answer. So number four is remaining. It might be answer. I should not let my daughter take the bubble bath. So bubble bath, it is the answer. Why bubble bath is not good for UTI? Let me read their rationale. The correct answer is number four. I should not let my daughter take the bubble bath. Why? Rational. Saying that the child should not take the bubble bath demonstrate effectively teaching because the well in the bubble bath preparation may irritate to the urethra or contributing to urinary tract infection. Girls and women should wipe the perineum from front to back not back to front because the urethra and anus is very close. It's easy to transmit the infection, particularly Echeria coli or E. coli. To avoid contamination of the urethra with the fecal bacteria, it is good. Clean front to back. Although antibiotics are used to treat UTI, they are not given prophylactically. No evidence suggests that the warm bath help to prevent urinary tract infection. What next question? A nurse is teaching a female client with a history of multiple urinary tract infection. Which statement indicate the client understand the teaching about to prevent UTI. So there are four options. Which one reflect that my patient is understand how to prevent UTI? 
Number one, I should wipe from back to front. It should be front to back. So number one is not answer. I should take a tub bath at least three times per week. It, it does not any evidence, does not have any evidence that take the tub bath at least three times per week can prevent UTI. Number three, I should take at least thousand milligram of vitamin C each day. Number three has a possibilities. Number four, I should limit my food intake to limit my trips to the bathroom. So number three is the answer but I'm not sure number three is the answer. But still, I want to say number three is the answer because number one is not an answer. It is the, absolutely wrong. Number two is not an answer because there are no evidence that tub bath can prevent a UTI. Also, I should limit my food intake. So, Fluid intake limit means more danger. So number four is not answer. I do not know number three is, I am not confirmed, but still it is the answer because I'm sure that one, two, and four is not an answer. So here I'm just showing you how to choose the answer if you are not 100% sure. This is the secret to pass the NPLEX board exam. Next here, the title says, say, I should take at least 1,000 milligram of vitamin C. The rationale, a client demonstrate understanding of teaching when she states that she should take vitamin C each day. Increasing vitamin C intake to at least 1,000 milligram per day helps acidify the urine. Increase the amount of bacteria that can grow. So bacteria can die in acidic media. When you take vitamin C, the acidity will increase. The client should uh, wipe from front to back to avoid introducing bacteria from an arts area into the ureter. The client should shower, not the bath, to minimize the amount of bacteria that can enter the ureter. The client should increase her food intake. Also, avoid every two to three hours and completely emptying her bladder. Holding the urine in the bladder can cause the bladder to become distended, which place the client at further risk for urinary tract infection. The next question here, a client 33, eight weeks pregnant, arrives in emergency department complaining of contraception. To help to confirm that she in the true level, the nurse should assess for. So sometimes mother is confused. Her liver pain is true or false. As a healthcare provider, it is very important to distinguish between true level or character of the false level. Mother is her eight weeks pregnant. She is ready to give the delivery, but labor is or labor pain or character is true or false. Number one, irregular contraction. So true labor is a regular contraction. Increase the fetal movement. So labor. True labor or false labor or delivery, it is not related to the fetal heart rate. Number three, 
change in the cervical effacement and dilatation after after one or two hours. So number three is a good option we should think. Let me read the number four. Contraction that feel like pressure in the abdomen and groin. So number three, they said, effacement, right? Effacement in pregnancy, what does it mean? And what is the correct answer? This is changing the cervical effacement and dilatation after one or two hours. This is the nature of the true labor. So contraction, mucus plug formation and rupture of the mucus plug and amniotic fluid came out or amniotic sac rupture. This is the step to progress the labor. So first of all, we have to know what is the effacement. Effacement means the cervix and cervix is going to straight, stretch out and get thinner. Dilatation, effacement and dilatation. So dilatation means that the cervix is open. As a labor, the cervix may start to thin and efface and open means dilate. And this is the preparation of cervix for baby to pass through the birth canal or vagina. So rational decide the true labor is characterized by progressive cervical effacement, right? and dilatation. As I told you, effacement means the cervix get straight, stretch out and get thinner. And dilatation means the cervix going to be open like this picture, picture number three here, open. Regular contraction, discomfort that moves from back to the front of the abdomen and possibly bloody show. False labor causes irregular contraction and that are felt primarily in the abdomen and groin and commonly decrease weight walking, increase the fetal movement or lack of change in cervical effacement or dilatation every one or two hours. So be, before we go to next question, I want to clear out what are the characteristics of true labor and false labor. About the contraction, in case of true labor, it is constant, it is regular, but false labor, it is inconsistent, irregular. Usually contraction start begin in the back, but the false level contraction start from abdomen and groin. The frequency increase progressively, but false level frequency inconsistent. Duration, increase progressively, but false labor inconsistent. Pain also increase progressively, but false incons inconsistent. The cervix in true labor dilate and effacement, means open up thinner and stretch out. But in false labor, insignificant change. Next question. A teenage mother brings her one-year-old child to the pediatrician office for a well baby checkup. She, she says 
that her infant cannot sit alone or not rule of her. An appropriate response by the nurse would be. So my baby, one year old. So it is the question about the developmental milestone. So what is the appropriate response by the healthcare provider? So this is very abnormal. Your child must be sick. Whatever it is, number one is not an answer because this is not a therapeutic way of communication that I said your child must be sick. Number two, let's see about the further developmental testing. Number three, don't worry. This is normal for her age. Number four, maybe you just have not seen her do this. Number four also does not make sense, right? So we make it short out of four, answer maybe two, maybe three. Don't waste your time number one or number four. And this is the secret for NCLEX board exam to choose the correct answer. The correct answer said, let's see about the further developmental testing, right? What a nice way to communicate with the patient. Rational, starting there, the further developmental testing is necessary, is appropriate. Because at the age 12 months, the child should be sitting up and ruling over. Therefore, the child may have a development problem, saying the infant behavior is abnormal or suggesting that the mother has not seen her infant do this. Milestone is not therapeutic and can cut off communication with the mother. Telling the mother that the infant behavior is normal, mislead, and also it is a false hope. The mother with false reinsurance is not a way of communication. Next question. A nurse is caring for 19 months old infant with dehydration and also weight loss. The infant mother start there, her son does not like to eat and that she hates to make him eat also. Right? So the nurse should what should do. So patient has a dehydration, first of all, Right, so if the patient has dehydration and weight loss, what are the response we see? Contact the social worker on duty and give her information about the situation. So a mother came, the baby is dehydrated and weight loss. I need to check it out. Is it really dehydrated? So Contact the social worker does not make sense. Contact the physician to have the child put in isolation. This is the patient who do not have any infection. I do not need isolate. Number three, request that a dietitian talk with the parents about the infant and nutrition. There are so many babies do not like to eat. So it's, it's a good counseling, motivation can change their condition. Contact the local police, oh my God, why? There are no sign of abuse. Why I contact to the local police? What is my responsibilities here? I have to evaluate first, right? So to collect us is the request there a dietitian talk 
with the parents about the infant and nutrition. Rational. The infant's mother needs assistance in maintaining her child's diet, requesting that a dietitian speaks with the mother about the child's diet is within the nursing scope of practice. The nurse should not call the local police or social worker on duty because there is no evidence of child abuse or negligence. Many infants are very picky eater and also choose not to eat or drink. The nurse should not need to call to the physician or here not to call to the physician infant put to isolation or isolation is not indicate for dehydration next question a nurse is preparing to educate a 13 years old adolescent with asthma to administer his own breathing treatment which principle should the nurse keep in mind when planning the teaching session 13 years old adolescents means developing age patient has asthma and need to educate about the how to take the breathing techniques or treatment so I am the healthcare provider, I am the uh, nurse. What I should keep in mind when I'm deep with the patient like adolescents age group. Number one, the adolescents are unable to follow details instruction. Who said it? Absolutely wrong, right? They are smarter than us adolescents. Young star, adolescents are worried about appearance different from their peers. It is very important to us, good, because they are very concerned about their body image. Number three, adolescents find motor coordinate is not sufficient and developing to admin treatment. No, it is not true. Fine motor coordination so if they have do not have any neurological problem they develop the fine motor coordinate easily number four adolescents have a well-developed sense of self-identity so number two and number four is a good choice right so what is the answer number two why not number four yeah, delusions have a well-developed sense of self-ideation. So it is well-developed, but it is not knowledgeable, not experienced well, but they're worried about their image. So we chose number two. Yeah, delusions have a strong need to belong and they look for social approval from their peers. Knowing that in knowing this information will help the nurse construct an effective technique a teaching plan. Adolescents are capable of following details instruction according to the scientist Piget, he said. Adolescents are at the formal operation stage and are capable of deduction, capable of reflectives and hypothetical reasoning. The fine motor coordinate is well developed by adolescents. According to the another scientist named Erickson, he said, Psychological development and adolescence is the stage of 
identity versus the role of confusion. During this stage, the adolescents strives to establish a sense of identity and identity is not already well developed because lack of knowledge, lack of education and lack of experience. Which statement best indicate that a client understand how to administer his own insulin injection. Number one, I need to be sure no air bubble remain. Number two, I need to wash my hand before I give myself my injection. Number three, if I'm not feeling well, I can get a friend or neighbor to help me. Number four, I wrote down the steps in case I forget what to do. So in this question, you have to read it very carefully. What examiner wants to know? Examiner asking, because one, two, three, four, all are important. But which one the best indication indicates that the client understand how to administer his own insulin? So best response and his own insulin injection. The correct answer is, I wrote down the steps in case I forget what to do. What rational? The fact that the client has written down each step of insulin administration provides the best assurance that he will follow through with all the proper steps. Awareness of ear bubbles and hand washing indicate that the client understands certain aspect of giving an injection, but does not confirm he understands all of the steps. Saying that he can ask a friend or neighbor for help indicate a need for further instruction. What next? A nurse is teaching a client about hormonal contraceptive therapy. If a client missing three or more pills in a row, the nurse should instruct the client about what? Take all of the missing dose as soon as she discovered the oversight. Number two, take two pills for next two days and use an alternative contraceptives method until the next cycle. Take the three pills for next three days and use an alternative contraceptives method until the next cycle. Number four, discard the pack, use an alternative contraceptive method until her period begins and start a new pack on the regular schedule. So to answer this question, you do not need to read the book. To answer this question, you do not to be the master. To answer this question, you do not to be experienced to using the contraceptive pill. Why? Because number one, two and three is never answer in pharmacology. If any patient miss any dose, we never ever tell them, take the two pill in the next two days or take the three pills in the next three days or take the all missing doses. Number one, number two, number three is, does not make any sense. It is wrong. Resting is number four. It is another secret to answer the question. So discard the pack, use the alternative contraceptive method. So if patient take the 
contraceptive pill, take them to use the condom, right? Alternative. So rational, take client two, missing three or more pill in a row should discard the bag. Use an alternative contraceptive method until her period begins. The start a new bag on regular schedule and taking all missing doses, take the two pill for next two days or taking three pills for next three days does not ensure effectiveness and can increase the risk of adverse reaction. Next question, a nurse is assessing a eight months old infant during a wellness checkup. Which action is a normal developmental ox for an infant in that age group? So this question about the developmental milestone. So assessment the eight months old infant. Number one, sitting without support, saying two words and feeding himself with a spoon and playing a pity cake. The correct answer is sitting without support because my baby is an eight months old infant. So according to the developmental milestone, the most infants should be able to see it unsupported by the age of seven months. And saying two words is expected by the 15 months old infant. By the 17 month, the toddler should be able to feed himself with a spoon. A 10 month old infant should be able to play a petty cake.